Hello everyone, this is Dr. Charishma from the Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry. This presentation is about Hall's technique. This technique is uh, Hall's technique is also called as biological technique or minimal cutting approach technique. This is one of the techniques used for the placement of stainless steel crowns in pediatric dentistry. The name was given after the scientist Dr. Norma Hall. So come this technique has several advantages such as this is very quick and non-invasive, not much of tooth preparation is required. Similar to a traumatic restorative treatment, uh, there is no need for the carious removal or there is no need for local anesthesia or rubberdam application. Because of all the above reasons, this technique is mostly acceptable to the dentist, parent and the child. Whereas the disadvantages of this technique are the untreated carious lesions which are left behind might spread into the deeper pulp tissues and can cause pulp pathology. The second disadvantage is because there is already a stainless steel crown which is placed, it becomes difficult for the retreatment in case of pulp pathology. Hence, this technique can only be used as a supplement to the conventional technique but not completely as a substitute. So, where do you use this? The various clinical situations are Firstly, class 1 non cavitated carious lesions wherein the child is unable to accept visual sealants. And class 1 cavitated carious lesions wherein the child is un unable to accept carious removal and conventional restorations. And also, can be, this technique can be used in class 2 cavitated or non cavitated lesions. In the same way, there are some situations where the Hall's technique cannot be used, such as when there are signs or symptoms of irreversible pulpitis. When there are clinical or radiographic signs of pulp exposure in unrestorable crowns like those which are indicated for extraction and also in patients at risk for bacterial endocarditis. Coming to the procedure. So, uh, the first step in procedure is setting up the armamentarium. So, what are all the instruments which are required for the procedure? Firstly, diagnostic instruments like mouth mirror, tweezer, probe and spoon excavator. Then instruments for placing separators like separator placing instrument, needle holders, mosquito forceps, etc. Floss also can be used. Then instruments which are used for the manipulation of the stainless steel crowns like crown crimping plier, contouring plier and straight hook plier. The other things also to be kept ready such as uh, cotton rolls for isolation and type one, sim type one glass and almost cement for looting the crown and the different sizes of the crowns need to be kept ready. Then the coming to the step two that is the placement of the stainless steel uh, placement of the separators so why do we usually place separators in primary teeth only when there are very tight contacts and we know when the stainless steel crown is not going to be placed otherwise usually primary dentition is well spaced enough uh, which allows the stainless steel crown to go without any preparation so when there are tight contacts you can use a floss or a needle uh, needle forceps to allow the uh, separator to go through or separator place uh, separator placing instrument will be there which is more convenient so this is separator placing instrument because which we can easily place the separators in in the proximal areas so this can be placed for around 20 minutes to half an hour which allows uh, which allows us to give the enough amount of uh, time for the contact area to open so coming to the next step after placing the separ uh, separators we after half an hour around we have to remove the separators so how do we remove the separators we can either use an explorer or a pointed end of the probe to remove the explorer so here you can see when you are removing the explorer the important thing is you have to hold the other end with the finger so that it won't just jump into the oral cavity and uh, it may cause to, uh, an unnecessary uh, swallowing or the aspiration in very small children. The next step is to select the proper crown size, okay, that fits the tooth correctly, mes uh, the tooth mesorestally and bucolingually without any exposure of the tooth. Uh, so, there are different sizes of the crowns which are available uh, over the market. So, first you have to try the crown. So you can see here the, there's a lot of root structure which is being exposed and the tooth is uh, crown is not going inside. So let's take the next size of the crown and then let's try. So this is the next size, E5 size. So when you see, yes, it's almost going in. 
frog belly but this is the nearest possible size that fits the tooth okay so when this kind of tooth or uh, crowns are selected you can slightly adjust the crown uh, so that it is going to fit the tooth correctly here we are using hoe plier to just flatten the mesial and distal ends of the crown and now we are again trying in the crown yes uh, now the crown has fit correctly with no exposure now after try and you just uh, we have to remove the crown and then uh, prepare the tooth for the looting of the crown so how do you remove the crown using a spoon excavator the same thing the point the point uh, the finger need to be on the crown so that it crown does not slip into the oral cavity so after the uh, uh, trial of the in selecting the proper size of the crown you can just lute the crown with the type 1 low viscosity gic so for that uh, you have to mix mix the type 1 looting gic in a looting consistency okay and then you have to load the crown load the crown while loading the crown we have to remember that two thirds of the crown should be uh, filled with the looting cement two thirds of the crown yes and you have to spread the cement on all the surfaces so that it is spread evenly then you have to loot the crown before looting the crown you can just clean the teeth with the soft caries and all okay and dry the tooth isolate the tooth with cotton rolls okay then loot the crown after looting you can ask the patient to bite on the cotton roll which is placed over the teeth so that this is so that the excess cement flows out and then, then you can check, check for, for the occlusion after uh, looting the crown you have to check for the occlusion and uh, uh, then you can remove all the excess cement which is present in the interproximal areas and uh, and thank you comparatively this is an easier simpler technique to treat initial carious lesions in uncooperative patients where crown preparation would be very difficult so this is the Hall's technique. Thank you one and all.